Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, everything, you know, Jesus issued a challenge to Satan. He said, if you can make one jot or one tittle not happen, then you can beat me. Everything you see happening now on the earth, politically or any other way, is to stop the glory from filling this earth. God's life is on the line of his oath. As I live, he said. Now, yeah, let me, uh, it would be, God was saying, if I go down, if you go down, he said, I'll just go down with you before I'll let you go down. Well, be it known unto every jackal, be it known unto every jackal that howls, there will never be a cold day in hell for you who have set your teeth to destroy and stop God's oath. It would be a cold day in hell before that would happen. Satan seeks to throw the creation into utter darkness so that he can rule. Well, be it known unto him and the whole kingdom of hell. Your defeat was already prophesied by the Almighty at Adam's creation. And no cowardly politician who claims the name of Jesus, no cowardly prophet will make it so. For behold, says the Lord, you have entered a war against a prophecy that I released out of my own mouth. Therefore, you have found yourself fighting against the sword of my mouth. That's what he says to jackals that howl. To cowardly politicians that could stop all of this. You really think that that there were not at stake at tyranny. I'm going to show you something now. I want you to listen to this. Not long ago, you know, I keep saying this. You've got to be able to see through wicked politicians. You've got to see through them. You can't believe them. They are liars. They would do anything to bring about their agenda. <clears throat> now, not long ago, I saw this. I saw serpents coming up out of the ground. Now, I'll get into that in a minute. But not long back, just days ago, I guess, Nancy Pelosi started running for, she's running for her office again. You know, I said show that first one first, but don't show the other one first when I tell you to, the second one first. And this is a clip from Fox. Well, maybe it wasn't Fox. Maybe I took this, uh, this maybe it came from Victory or something. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But, but I want you to see this one. And when she's asked, you know, she starts talking about why she's running again. And we're going to show this probably twice, this one clip. So go ahead and show it. And everybody really pay attention to this. Look at her face very closely. All right, go ahead. When people ask me what are the three most important issues facing the Congress, I always say the same thing. Our children, our children, our children. Our children, our children, our children. The last time I heard that, it was from a parent filing a police report outside CNN. <laughs> but when she's in the arena, does she take a punch or throw a punch for the children? As you hear me say, when you're in the arena, you have to be able to take a punch or throw a punch for the children. Now... Go back and show it one more time, and if I, you, they can hear me, you say, so I'm going to talk a little bit on it. So go ahead and, when and go back. people ask me, what are the three most important Watch issues her facing smile. the Congress? I always say the same thing. Our children, our children, our children. 
Our children, our children, our children. The last time I heard that, it was from a parent filing a police report. Listen how the reporter equates it. Now, what the reporter? Watch this now. But when she's in the arena, does she take a punch or throw a punch for the children? Watch her smile. As you hear me say, when you're in the arena, you have to be able to take a punch or throw a punch for the children. Now, why does she smile so when she says, for the children? For the children. Now, even the reporter equated that to something bad. Couldn't you see that? You could hear it. He said, last time I heard that, you heard what he said. But she smiles like this when she mentions the children. Now, watch this clip. from, uh, And this was posted. I don't know exactly when it happened. But it's self-explanatory. But I want you to watch her face. And this was the day... They voted on um, late-term abortions, all of this to kill children all the way up to birth or something like that. Watch this now. Watch close. September 24th, 2021. On this vote, the yeas are 218, the nays are 211. The bill is passed without objection. A motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. Somebody yelled out, this is murder. Now, go back and show it again. Look at her face. Watch how excited she gets about killing children. On this vote, the yeas are 218, the nays are 211. Full term now, they, she can kill babies. The bill is passed oh, without objection. Excited. A motion what? to reconsider is laid upon the table. Now, she is that excited about killing children all the way up to birth. So now when she smiles in the other and says, the children, the children, the children, now you know what's behind the smile and what she wants to do with the children. Now, does anybody see this? Am I, am I just alone in all of this? I mean, you know, well, Brother Robin, you now, now you're crossing on sacred ground. No, they violated sacred ground when they started slaughtering the unborn in the womb to the tune of 350,000. And now someone reported it was 600,000 last year in this country alone. And people who can lick their lips over killing babies and offering them to Baal as a sacrifice. You say, well, how do you know it went to Baal? In 2016, when Hillary Clinton, who, by the way, is a champion for abortion, a champion for late-term abortion, and when Donald Trump in the, in, in, in the debate brought out exactly what happens in a partial birth abortion and right at the time of birth and ripping that baby out, she, she reprimanded him for it on the stage and said, when you put it that way, well, I didn't know the way to put it. Trump just finally looked around and said, I don't know who any, what anybody else thinks, but that is wrong. There's something very sinister going on, my brother and sister, and it's a lot more sinister than you realize, or maybe you don't, maybe you do realize it. You're fighting against spirits. You're not fighting against flesh and blood. And, you, and to scream, I hate these people, I hate these, this is not getting the thing fixed. What was it, that superhero movie thing that come out and they said, if uh, talking about this enemy called Hydra who was supposed to be connected to Nazis, said if you cut the head off of one and another will, five more or whatever will take its place. Two more will come up. You're not fighting flesh and blood. There must be a revival and the revival and the glory shows up and pardons the nations and delivers them. 
The serpent spirit is the spirit of pythos. It was the serpent that spake with the woman. To start with, there is some very striking characteristics of the serpent spirit and the serpent. Something made that demonic spirit and that serpent very compatible. See, the serpent is not, was not the devil. If the serpent, and if the serpent had have just been possessed against his will, it would have been very unfair to take his legs from him. But the scripture says this, you see, the serpent was a serpent. The serpent was more subtle. This means shrewd, crafty, sly, sensible, prudent. And listen to this. He would give crafty counsel. And his name, uh, uh, subtle, also means to make bare or smooth. And it says the serpent was ill-natured. Cross. The serpent was the perfect being that could come into the garden because Satan was on the outside of the garden. He was the perfect being that was allowed to come in the garden to talk to the woman. He was sly and crafty. The serpent showed a cunning or deceitful nature. He could be, he could be used. He would make remarks. Now listen, here's his characteristics. He would make remarks and glance and make facial expressions showing insulting facial expressions when you talked. Said he would show insulting uh, facial expressions shown in an insulting way that he had some sort of secret knowledge that may be harmful or embarrassing to you. Notice that's why he said in Genesis 3, hath God said? You could see him doing it now with his facial expressions. He was very crafty. He was very sly. He was, uh, it says, actually, the serpent had sharp powers of judgment. The serpent was created by the Lord God. He was from the field. He was Adam's Judas. He was Adam's most trusted animal. And he had sharp powers of judgment. He could talk to the rest of the animals. He could absolutely, he could almost rule over them. He had legs. He could walk. Some believe he could fly. But we know he had legs because he lost them. And we know that some of the largest snakes in the world have hip sockets where they lost their legs. And so this thing could rear its head up probably 50 feet in the air and lean down into the woman's face and make expressions at her remarks. Have you ever, ever met somebody like that? That if you start asking them questions, look at Genesis 3. Now, uh, just... Uh, just stay with me here. You're going to, I know. So watch this now. In Genesis 3, let's take a look at this. I told you we're going a lot of places today. Now the serpent was more subtle. Now you know what that means. Than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said with an insinuating look and insulting glance and facial expressions like I know something about him you don't. And he says, has God said? I've known people like this. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Can you see him? He do he, with his expression. And the serpent said, with that look, whatever that stupid look was, he would look and twist his face and make her feel like, yeah, yeah, really? Is that what you think? Really? He said, you shall not surely die. 
I'm going to reveal the secret I know about God now that you don't know. He knows that in the day you eat of this, your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened at the same time. And they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now, can you see that? I've met people like that that can control you with a facial expression. Oh, they can. They can talk to you and you can be talking to them and, you, and you're just talking about what you believe to be true and then suddenly they'll make an expression at you and make you doubt everything you know and you find yourself trying to please them and order things around you to make their life what they wanted you to do to start with, to make the decision they wanted you to make. That's how the serpent was used. And he had such a, an ability to be smooth and crafty and, to, and, and was sharp in his judgment. <clears throat> he became the, first, uh, the perfect candidate for that spirit, that demonic spirit was compatible with him. And he allowed that spirit to possess him at his will. That's the only reason he could reap a harvest. Because he entered a man's arena and caused a man to fall. And when he caused mankind to fall, he put himself in that arena and therefore he could reap the harvest because he willingly allowed himself to be used. Now, when you begin to st uh, study the words out uh, that describe the serpent, you find out that he made remarks to the woman. We've covered that along with facial expressions, insulting in an insulting way that he had some sort of secret knowledge that may be harmful or embarrassing. You've seen people, and embarrassing, isn't it something that he was about to point out their nakedness? You've seen people like this. They can control people with remarks coupled with facial expressions. The serpent, one meaning was he was very smooth. Can't you see him in Genesis 3 with a long, shrewd, crafty remark coupled with facial expressions that he knew something, some secret that God hadn't told them? You can see it when he said, Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The serpent said unto the woman in verse 4, You shall not surely die. With his shrewd judgment, sly remarks, and facial expressions, he said to her, God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You can see it happening this way once you know the meaning of the words. Now, this serpent had help from a demonic spirit provided by Satan. Now, here we get into this, to this. Principalities use personalities the serpent being subtle shrewd crafty sly ill-natured this was the perfect creature to be a partner with this demonic spirit if the serpent had have only been used by the devil then it would have been unfair for the lord god to pronounce that kind of curse or harvest these were harvest because he entered a man's arena now when it let me, let me say this, and I, I know, I know, I'm, I'm trying to hurry. When it, when it, uh, when it comes to the devil interfering with a man's life, he puts this creature, a uh, willfully deceiving man. That's how the, the the serpent got cursed. But now watch, it lost when he entered the man's arena to cause the man to fall. Then the serpent was entitled to the harvest because he entered a new world. And Adam let him in. Adam let him in. He had some kind of promise from the enemy or that serpent would have never did that. He was going to prosper. He was either thought he could become a man 
or he thought he was going to, because that's Satan's wildest dream is to be a man. He always wants to be a man, but he can never be a man. So it entitled that serpent to a, a harvest, just like a man, and he lost his ability to walk after that. The serpent was subtle, cunning, crafty, sly. He could make remarks and facial expressions as if he knew something that you didn't know that could harm you or embarrass you. Now listen what I said. Subtle, cunning, crafty, sly, makes remarks and facial expressions as if he knows something that could harm you or embarrass you. This spirit that possessed him is the same way. These politicians are perfect for them to be involved with a cunning, deceitful nature. They have a cunning, deceitful nature. They are smooth, making remarks and looks that make you believe there's something they know that you don't know. I heard a conversation in the spirit the other night. <laughs> I heard them say something. And you may tell you what I heard. I'm going to if you want to know. If you don't, I'm going to tell it anyway. But I want you to know. I want you to want to know. I heard or I knew a conversation. That was a, that was a line there that it's, it's so, you, it's hard to explain. It was going on behind the scenes. These crooked politicians these people that have buddied up with this spirit who fraudulently did what they did concerning ballots. I'm trying to talk in code. Ballots. I guess I'm, that's my southern way of saying it. They were talking about, these people were talking about terms of surrender. Oh, no, whoa, whoa, I heard them. They were discussing, the people are discussing on the, on the evil side, trying to craft terms of their surrender. They want to surrender. And those spirits they're working with, it made them angry. They did not like it. They don't like it, but they're discussing terms of surrender. Wow. Hallelujah. Now, this serpent spirit comes to join itself to those who are like-minded. You know, I'm not making fun of anyone at all. I wouldn't do that. I don't care if I, if I didn't like anything about them. I, I wouldn't mock somebody. Uh, but I will mock. Well, I will, I will too if it's like Elijah mocking the prophets of Baal. I will do that. But what I'm saying is I don't rejoice in somebody's harm in their shortcomings. And Biden obviously has mental issues. And if you, I got curious one day because I've been involved in deliverance ministries where I've I've seen people, I laid my hands one time, and was just saying, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Laid my hands on a deacon, and he just turned into a human snake right there in front of everybody. I mean, I, I've seen things that's just, if you don't believe there's demons, I don't believe there's demons, I hope you never meet one, because you are in for a rude awakening. Now, and I, I watched as Biden began to give speeches after they, they called him what they called him, which there's only one president. And so they, they uh, right now, so they called him. But there's, well, I won't get into that. But he starts talking. And then all at once, he'll just lean over and he'd just go, <sighs> and just start until the news media called it creepy. Well, you know, uh, Mr. Trump, for a long time, and people called him Creepy Joe and Sleepy Joe. And he fell asleep on stage. But he got real creepy, 
And he kept doing this and doing this. So one day, and I'm, I'm, stand, I'm just walking around. Uh, I think I was at the house or something. And I heard that on television when he did that growl, that low whisper. When he did, I knew that sound. I'd heard demons speak like that over and over and over. I turned around to look. And I took my phone. And when they got up to a place, I, I took the picture of him when he'd lean over and whisper. And I noticed something. This, and it, this happened over and over. And I noticed something. Show that picture of him. And this is not touched up at all. You see his eye? Is that his left eye, isn't it? Now watch this. Look at it in another photo. There's his right eye. But look at that pupil. Do you see it slotted? Every time he speaks that way, that I could catch him on camera, and I'd pull that eye up. Look at it. Now, now just look at it a minute. Don't take it down yet. Can you see that his pupil is elongated all the way from top to the bottom? If I had a picture of a serpent's eye to put up there next to it, I could show you that. And every time that thing would speak like that, you get up real close and suddenly that eye would show up. His right eye like that. I think that's his right, yeah, his right one there. It'd show up and that serpent's eye. Well, the other day I was, uh, I was listening and uh, Fauci came on the scene. And he's talking and he's halfway grinning the way he does. You know, he grins a lot. He had never noticed that. He smiles a lot. Oh, yeah. Pelosi smiles a lot, yeah. especially when she's talking about children. Yeah. And so here, here we have all of these. And, and then all of a sudden I thought, wait a minute. I stopped and went up with my phone, took another picture. Guess what shows up? Show his face. You see him there? There he was, just the talking. And that was the one I think I was watching Victory, and that one was on that. And, and watch this. And then suddenly, I, so I, I decided to, uh-oh. Wow. Look. Let's see another one. See if we got one more that you can see. Just so it's not a fluke. Didn't we have three up there? Didn't, we, didn't I give you three? Okay, well, they said I have a third one. But they said that's the one we got. Okay, now look at him close. Now, you really couldn't tell anything right here. But he starts that grinning. And senators like, you know, Rand Paul constantly. He knows something. And then, boom, the, when I zeroed in on it, look. Show the next one quick. Boom. Look at that. And it's not a fluke because it's that way in every one of them. When he starts that lion. And there is a picture of him. The third one that I thought I had sent. Even his teeth and his mouth look. With that slotted eye. What is that? A serpent has found. A personality. That matches his own. And these are the spirits. To cause the fall. Of man. I hope everybody's seeing this. So when you start looking at things like this, now we've looked at the glory. We've talked about what the enemy's trying to stop. We've looked at the serpent spirit. We've looked at principalities finding personalities. And you see two personalities right here. We saw uh, uh, one of the main leading politicians say the children, the children. And it was obvious what kind of smile. So we looked at the other one and see why, what makes her smile so. These are spirits you're dealing with. You're dealing with the serpent spirit. And remember when that serpent spirit, you remember reading in Genesis when it said, your eyes shall be opened. And now there's a phrase out called being woke. It's the same spirit. It's all the same spirit. So I wanted to bring some of that to you today and so that you could see, you know, not long ago, I had given a word, and um, it's coming to pass now. I'm, I, it's coming to pass on the news right now, and I don't know, you know, if I should. 
just say it or, uh, or not right this moment, but I'm going to tell you this. That what makes me, well, Lord, is that what you want me to do? I'd given this word back in, in uh, September of 2021, and I, I said it in May, uh, the 4th of May, uh, on the air. But where I heard this, and so I gave this prophetic word that uh, the bear is growling, the Ukraine is fainting, and the jackal in the White House is starting to chew his own leg off to get out of the trap that they've put him in. He don't want to be in it no more. And I said in that word, I don't know how far ahead I'm looking right now. This is what really concerns me concerning a lot of that. And of course, the bears Russia, you know. I don't know whether Obama is working with them or either it's taken him by surprise. I'm just going to leave it at that. You pray for Brother Robin, would you? Because I, I went somewhere just then. Now, I want to give you some of these prophetic words. And um, this is what I had heard. This was on January 23rd, 2022. This was in the night. The year of reckoning. God is bringing to his people. God is bringing joy to his people in the year of reckoning. That's the way I heard it. January 23rd, 2022. The year of reckoning. God is bringing joy to his people. Yet the earth will moan. The wicked people is talking about now. In the earth are not worthy of God's people. The wicked people in the earth are not worthy of God's people. Behold, the time of moaning has come. A major wicked player in this earth I see with a disease. The Lord says their diseases are turning back on them, says the Lord. In the time of wretchedness, the Lord said there would be light in the land of Goshen. Hallelujah. Then he spoke this to me, Psalm 35. We need to begin to Look at Psalm 35. Psalm 35 is your psalm to overcome the whole year and everything else. Hallelujah. Then right in the middle of it, I heard this word. But you want me to do that? Okay. Psalm 35. Let's put that on the screen. Uh, we'll, just, we'll, we'll just look at whatever he lets us look at of it, whatever he wants us to see here. Psalm 35, it says, this, this is the psalm, listen to this. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take, up, take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the, the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. I'm supposed to tell you this. There's going to be a surprise when Obama shows his face. Now, <clears throat> let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them for without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit which without cause they have digged for my soul 
Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself. Into that very destruction let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which delivers the poor from him that is too strong for him. <laughs> yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things I knew not. They rewarded me for evil for good. Ward, rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. It's the time of the soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fastings. My prayer returned into my own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. But in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yea, the, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and cease not. With hypocritical mockers and feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long will they look on? How long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. And I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they, shall, they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eye hath seen it. And that's something. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silence, O Lord. Be not far from me. Stir up thyself and wake up thy judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to my righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so would we have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long if i'm not mistaken that is the psalm that the founding fathers when they met in congress had a prayer meeting for about three hours and bible study for hours and hours they went over that psalm and that was the psalm that they wrote back i think that was the psalm if i'm not mistaken that john adams told abigail his wife who was his greatest advisor they said of the time as far as a human advisor and he said, tell this to your father, what we've learned out of Psalm 35. So Psalm 35 is our deliverance in all of this. Then I heard this in some prophetic matters, and I'll go ahead and say it. Don't take that matter, this is to someone, into your own hands, saith the Lord, I will repay. And then I heard this, three years worth of preaching. Two years, not two years. Two, not so much. Preach hard and fast. Stop what's coming. Behold, it comes. That's what I heard the Lord say in the middle of the night. The Lord talks. He talks differently than men, you know. A dark horse comes that rides uh, no, a dark horse comes. Woe to him that rides it. A high-profile person rides him. He who comes after the jackal is removed. He who comes after the jackal is removed. I will strike him, says the Lord, with lightning out of heaven. Fear has ruled long enough. That's what I heard the Lord say. Then I heard these names. I heard uh, Terrell, Weems, and Lemuel Weems. I heard those two names. I saw two. I saw uh, UN cars, two of them, full of people 
front and back seat. Then I heard these words, blistering summer, dominoes falling. And I wrote beside it, remember dominoes. Now, I'm trying to give you everything before we close today. I hope you've enjoyed the 11th hour. It's been a good 11th hour today. Has it not? Then I heard these words. I heard Rome, Georgia. Something in Rome, Georgia. And then I heard these names. And I heard these names twice. Or one of them twice. Titus Brown. And I heard again Lemuel. And then I heard the name Harris. And then I heard the name either Dronel, Drunel, or Denise Pickard or Picknard. I heard those names. And then I heard, this is the wildest thing in the middle of the night. You know, God talks to you in the night and you're riding in the dark. It says stereo test. And then I heard Zach and the name Milford. Then I heard the name Timothy and Allen. Zach Milford, Timothy Allen. Whether they're the same name or whatever it is. That's what I heard. And the Lord wants all those names that I called out today. Remember something. God has you on his mind. You are not forgotten. Some of you wanted to hear, oh, if, if he just called my name, I just did. And some of you may be looking and saying, I wish he'd call my name. Well, the Lord just talked about you too. Said you watch it wanted me to call your name. The Lord is, you're on his mind. You are on his mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't forget that. God has not forgotten us. Neither will he ever. He has engraved us in the palm of his hand. <laughs> Rồi cũng khóc, cũng cười và nhớ về người bởi vì yêu. Trên hoang tử lúc này, nàng công chúa sinh đẻ đã đến lúc xuống về. Chỉ cần bước qua một bước nữa mà thôi, trăm giây phút tuyệt vời.